Thing I would like to reiterate that this is a meeting for the city council to conduct city business only and not to address issues with the mayor or the council and those issues that are to be addressed elsewhere at another time. Thank you. We're going to open the uh, floor to receive input from the public. I want to welcome uh, Troop Pack 721 and Troop 617. Out of Boston, you guys want to stand up and say anything? <laughs> so do we have badges or anything that you got to do? The reason why you're here, just looking at. Uh, Archer and my we love scouts are here uh, we are working on our citizenship award um, and one of the requirements is to attend a council meeting or visit with an elected official and you guys are busy on our meeting night so we came to you Very good. Okay. thank you, thank you. Anybody else would like to uh, have input to the city council, as long as it deals with city business? Yes, my question is, what, um, it's consistent with what the city does, and has municipal order 2013-19 changed from the last council meeting? I can address the municipal order, there's been no changes. Okay. Well, then I guess I can say. What I need to say is um, does, it, does it address city business? I think it does. I asked for city business and nobody could tell me. Mr. Reynolds, can you tell me what city business is? In my opinion, it's obvious that it relates to the way the city is run or to any issue before the city that requires the consideration of the council. Uh, and, uh, Required the council to vote as a body. Okay, so the citizen input, you, you can no longer come in and say what you need to say. I, I, I have an issue that addresses um, something that was said the last time that we were here. Well, I don't know what you're going to say, so it's difficult. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead on and say it. Let me make a suggestion. Okay. If it doesn't relate to city business, I think the mayor has made it clear that he has an open door policy. And some things may be better discussed with the mayor at a mutually convenient time at City Hall than here if it's not going to fall under the definition of city business. It's not going to fall under the definition of city business, but it's not to use his words to bash him or anything. It's um, an item that he said that has not transpired. No, we're not going to discuss that. No. 
that that no. does not pertain to city business. Every, city business is, is about your garbage or electric, water, sewer, anything the city service does for you. That is it. That is it. But, you, but the municipal it. order, I got okay. The municipal order has not changed according to Ms. Bryant. So the last time that we were here on the 27th of February, then it was it was okay. And you all went into a uh, private session and then you, you all came out and you said that nothing has changed. So we were able to say what we thought that we needed to say the last time under and with this order. <coughs> so now it's being, um, you know, you've been told what you can and cannot say? City business. Okay. We well, I think the city business. We're going to move on. Okay. I think the city business. No, ma'am. We're moving on. Next item on the agenda. Does anybody else have anything else to say? Okay. We want the bids and contract proposals and service requests. Uh, it's the uh, ADS S cable TV construction labor bid. Uh, Jeff Mills, would you like to describe the reasons for bidding? Yes. Um, this is the uh, second phase, if you will, of this budget year's uh, fiber expansion uh, in the uh, county area according to you know, what the criteria we presented at budget time for uh, a number of uh, specified bid, or I mean, uh, build areas. Um, and we opened the bids on February the 4th for that, uh, Eric here had uh, compiled all of the particular units. There's probably um, a list of 20 or so different units that make up a construction project like this, uh, installing strands, installing anchors, uh, the actual installation of the uh, ADSS fiber itself. That stands for all dielectric self-support, by the way. So um, we had uh, four bidders respond to us. And Jason Compton, as you know, uh, is the uh, fellow that's uh, also performing sweep services for us. But he was the low bidder at 115, 897, and 72 cents, which we're recommending for award. Discussion? I have a question. Oh, okay. Did you have a question? Yes. Go ahead. Um, um, um. Uh, we need a motion. motion. Need a motion to. Uh, you need a motion to discuss. I need a motion. Uh, and then a second, and then you discuss. I put forth a motion to discuss. <laughs> no? <laughs> We're learning. Go ahead. requirement that we expand in certain areas when we when we uh, are expanding or what, what what exactly is this uh, no is this for mesh, mesh, mesh. this isn't this isn't necessarily required by our franchise with the county okay um, these are areas that uh, are financially equivalent or better um, than what we were building under the old criteria 20 homes per mile right right okay mm -hmm. so we analyze those costs in uh, 20 11 or 10 or 12 dollars excuse me that yeah. 1300 dollars of passing yeah. Yeah. was what uh, our uh, current rate structure and take rate of services could support it's coming back to me now okay All right. so we reestablished that as a 1300 dollars per passing because uh, these uh this fiber architecture is uh, actually cheaper to construct than the hfc the, the, the traditional classic plant that we built for years and also, we can construct a major portion of the backbone down the highway and postpone all those side taps or that we normally would build, mm -hmm. we build within 100 foot of every house in a hill under the collapsible designs. The fiber designs, we can go right down the road, drop eight port taps, and let the clock tick on when we construct the rest. And then, uh, to the extent that people, uh, uh, their, their individual installation exceeds that $1,300 uh, total, mm -hmm. taking into account what the 
it's already allocated into the project itself, plus their individual portion, they pay the difference. Uh, on the variation of the, the bids, there's a twenty-seven thousand dollar variation from the next to the next bid, and him being an out-state bidder, is his credibility and, and work record been checked? That's what I was on concern. Seems like it's a pretty good gap there for a bid. Yeah, Make sure we're gonna get what we pay for on. And he's the fellow that's doing our sweep services for us, our alignment. He's already in, in yeah. working for okay. Yeah, he's, right. he's currently under a okay. three-year contract for sweep with us at the moment. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, we're very comfortable with it. He helped us uh, rebuild uh, uh, Maple Hill okay. this year. Justin Williams, can you remind me what area we're building in? Uh, yeah, this particular uh, budget will finish this contract. And by the way, um, we won't probably get to all of this in this bid in this budget year. So this this whole hundred and fifteen eight ninety seven uh, wouldn't be expended in this budget. To your point, uh, the next builds that are in the contract and we can accomplish in this budget are Irish Rig Road, which is out off of Oak Woodville Road, Hobbs Lane. If you remember the folks that came to visit us at the community meeting, <coughs> that little area is built up and uh, the Munnin Farm got. Subdivided two options out there. Uh, a leftover from last year's budget in terms of uh, the ranking, density ranking. Uh, Bellwood Road, Humphrey Lane, Tom Vitito, Joe Malley. <coughs> and then Manton Road, Hutchins Ridge Road. And that's probably all we think we can accomplish by the end of the fiscal year. We're probably going to need an amendment. Did I say the right word? Amendment? Yeah, we oh. finish out the budget here, but we're recommending uh, Mr. Thompson's prices. It was a great bid. He's got some um, contract help with him that's pretty hungry, so we're recommending that. Councilman Simpson, do you have something? That was my question. Okay. So that being the case, I'll second the motion to approve the Cable Television Construction Services ADSS labor bid for Jason C. Thompson. Okay. 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 Well, then I'll make the motion. Okay. 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 J.C. Compton bid price at uh, $115,897.72 for the uh, construction of the cable. Is that right? ADSS project. Okay. Yeah, cable ADS uh, project. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Next item, up, uh, item number three, which is HRB, VRB, or planning zoning recommendations. It's VRB two thousand correction, VRB two one four, Justice County Farm Bureau. Okay, I'm going to ask Barbie to read the description. DRB 214 Nelson County Farm Bureau is a 60 foot by 32 foot, in parentheses, 1,920 square feet of office building, the northwest corner of New Shepherdsville Road, Kentucky 245, and Patriot Drive. On Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015, the Development Review Board Chairman and Janet Crow, Johnson Crow, the administrator, approved the application and recommended approval of the site, building, landscaping, and lighting plans for DRB 214 Nelson County Farm Bureau. Ms. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Uh, 
I make a motion to approve to approve DRB 214 Nelson County Farm Bureau. My motion is based on the enclosed copies of the DRB application, design standard review, and site, building, landscaping, and lighting plan. This motion includes any restrictions or conditions that may have been agreed to by the applicants and the joint city county planning commission of Nelson County. And I yield the floor for a second. Discussion? I'd just like to make sure the motion includes these three caveats of the four foot tall planning, uh, lighting, and an outdoor display. I presume your, your comment regarding their uh, agreement covers that. I assume they agree with that. Yes, sir. Okay, the motion is to approve the DRB 214, the Nelson County Farm Bureau, with the stipulations of the enclosed copies of the DRB application, the design standards review site, the building and landscaping and lighting plans are suitable and acceptable. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> Ayes have it. Motion is adopted. We're in uh, item number four, correspondence. If there is no objection, we will adopt the motion and approve it. Uh, the 5K run on 10 24 2015 for the Barstown Middle School and the One Mile Walk on February 21st, 2015 to remember Reagan Carter. I have a question. For the time of, so I need to excuse myself for correspondence A, since it applies to Barstown Middle School Petition 1. I will be best. Does that need to read the one as well? I will be best. Okay. I'll excuse myself. Okay. Uh, if I could, uh, can we vote on those separately? Because we do them together, then my recusal would not, I couldn't vote on the other one. But would he have to recuse himself since there's really not even money involved in it? I think it would be better. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll do them separately since he has to recuse himself. Mayor, that being the case, I'll make the motion to adopt uh, and approve the right request for Bart Town Middle School Students and Romans for the 5K on 2024 2015. Council Simpson? Second. Uh, discussion? My motion is adopted. No, nope, I'm sorry. The motion is, is to approve the 5K run. And so as Mr. Uh, no one motion. Motion is to approve the 5K run on 10 24, 2015 for the Barstown Middle School. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. 5 0. Now, now we're asking him about when we're going to do the one mile walk. There's no objections. We will adopt the, uh, uh, the motion to approve the one mile walk on February 21st, 2015, to remember Reagan Carter. Unanimous consent. No objections. <coughs> uh, the motion to approve is, is adopted. Thank you, guys. Number five, we're going to go to minutes. If there's no objections, we will adopt the motion to approve the minutes for 127, 2015, and 2, 3, 2015. Since there's no objection, the motion to approve the minutes for 
one twenty seven two thousand fifteen and two three two thousand fifteen is adopted. Uh, financial report number six. Anything? That was mailed out to you all, and I'll just wait for questions rather than getting up and talking about it. Have when was it mailed? Uh, the last. Oh, last yeah, yeah, that. yeah, last package. Okay, good. Which is the book? Which one should we just talk today? No, no. 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 Uh, item number seven ordinances. We, we have uh, no ordinances. <coughs> Under uh, number eight, unfinished business. Number nine, we're talking about new business. Uh, I've asked our risk manager, uh, Greg Ashworth, to describe the reasons for these resolutions. Uh, this resolution is simply the city of Barstown's recommitment to hazard mitigation. The Lincoln Trail area development requires that you have this resolution in place <clears throat> if you were to ever go after FEMA grant money in case of a natural disaster like a ice storm or a tornado or a flood. So if you ever want to apply for FEMA grant money, you have to have this resolution in place. That's, that's simple. Okay, I guess we've done this every year. Just okay. every year. Uh, resolution 2015-01, resolution to participate in the planning process for the Lincoln Trail Regional Hazard Mitigation and Flood Mitigation 2015 Plan update. Whereas the city of Bardstown recognizes the threat that natural hazards pose to people and property with the city, and whereas the city of Bardstown has prepared a multi-hazard and flood mitigation plan, hereby known as the Lincoln Trail Regional Hazard Mitigation and Flood Mitigation Plan in accordance with the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000. And whereas the Lincoln Trail Regional Hazard Mitigation and Flood Mitigation Plan identifies mitigation goals and actions to reduce or eliminate long-term risk to people and property in Bardstown from the impacts of future hazards and disasters. And whereas participation in the planning process by the City of Bardstown demonstrates our commitment to the hazard and flood mitigation plan and updating data, goals, and actions in the 2015 Lincoln Trail Regional Hazard Mitigation and Flood Mitigation Plan update. Now therefore be it resolved by the City of Bardstown, Kentucky that the local governing body will participate in planning for the 2015 Lincoln Trail Regional Hazard Mitigation and Flood Mitigation Plan update. In regard to Resolution 2, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Bardstown, Kentucky, that the risk manager is hereby authorized to execute for and on behalf of the City of Bardstown a public entity established under the laws of the Commonwealth of Kentucky for all applications and to file them in the appropriate state office for the purpose of obtaining certain federal financial assistance under the Disaster Relief Act, Public Law 288, 93rd Congress, or otherwise available from the President's Disaster Relief Fund, that the City of Bardstown, a public entity established under the laws of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, hereby authorizes its agent to provide to the state and to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, for all matters pertaining to such federal disaster assistance that the assurances and agreements printed on the reverse side hereof. Discussion? <coughs> Motion is to approve resolution 2015-01 and resolution 2015-02. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. There's no objection. 
I would like to adopt the motion to approve and reappoint Larry Tanner to the Barstown Housing Authority. Since there's no objections, I make uh, the motion is approved to reappoint Larry Tanner is adopted. Thank you. Okay, we're down to number 10, committee reports. Uh, a, it'd be the band meeting that was held on uh, January 2000, I mean January 26, 2015. The minutes were distributed. May I do remember at our last meeting, I did go over those minutes, and those are just in there, but you have a copy of it. B, which will be the cemetery committee um, management that was scheduled for February the 11th in the mayor's conference room, Councilman Simpson. You have the floor? Well, we're going to meet in the morning at 8.30. If anybody's on the committee, come on in. I'm afraid to jump on the script. She, she might get there. Yeah. It's 8.30. Yeah, it's 8.30. Yeah, it's 8.30. Trying to get used to the committee members actually take control of their committees and, and do that. So. Uh, 11, staff reports. Jeff? I don't have anything further. Uh, Chief McCubbin? No. Fire Chief? Nothing to report now. Right now. Mike Abel? Nothing other than what we Mayor Hamilton? Uh, Mayor, we have a, a gas franchise that needs to be extended. Uh, LDME has asked to extend it. Um, they, uh, uh, we can do it for any number of years, and I guess. Uh, in the coming days, we'll talk about it and we'll come back to council with the recommendation. Uh, one of the things that is possible is that uh, uh, I think most of the people that have uh, cash grant, most towns charge a 3% franchise fee to go for the maintenance of public bodies. Uh, you don't have to take it, but you may take it. I think you can get even more, but uh, I think more than 90% of the towns take the three percent. So at any rate, that's something for y'all to consider. Uh, I can get those numbers to you uh, of what it would yield uh, if you're interested. And or whether you're not interested, we can show you the numbers for your consideration uh, as we take it up. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> There's another project that uh, Nazareth has come working with our fire department about uh, maybe replacing the tank or eliminating the elevated storage tank on the Nazareth grounds um, and connect to our fire, our 16 inch pipe that's out on Wilson Parkway. That's about 2,500 feet from the end of our pipe to get to that tank which would then float off our million gallon tank and uh, <clears throat> that would be at their expense to extend it. And uh, there's a little bit of uh, concern I guess I'd have over the buffer that, that we signed with uh, the neighbors about the buffer and from the, the impact of that industrial park to the old Nazareth Road people, the Tadlock residents and some along Old Nazareth Road. So uh, anyhow, that's going to be coming. Uh, they're interested uh, in uh, improving their fire flow capacity for that campus. So uh, we'll be talking more about that. So. Larry Green, you're hiding. You should be on this side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the lake. I just wanted to uh, let the council know um, that we, we got our big horizontal cardboard baler in today and it was, uh, uh, they, they installed it and it is uh, it's working like a charm. It's, uh, we had three or four horizontal or vertical balers we were using for cardboard and, and this one baler will uh, produce more bales than all those combined. And much shorter, heavier bales still. So, uh, and a uh, much shorter amount of time and easier on the on the uh, workers out at the Guthrie Opportunity Center 
easier to operate and it's going to be a real you know, benefit to the recycling program. And, uh, so our next challenge is, to, is going to be now that we have the capacity to to uh, process all this cardboard will be to, to go out into the uh, particularly the commercial community and to try to collect more cardboard. And so we we'll be maybe looking to uh, talk to the council about whether or not we, we want to uh, address that uh, with rates or whether we just want to um, just pick it up. That we need to be addressing that soon because we now have the capacity to do a lot more for the country opportunity center. Yeah, and to, to be able to recycle, if we could push more industries, more downtown <coughs> businesses in mind to recycle, that would really benefit the uh, community out there. It really helps out a lot in, that, uh, in what we're trying to do and what they're trying to do out there. I think it's a good idea. Um, in regard to the resolution, I will need each one of the council's signature before you leave, so I'm just going to treat you before you leave. The resolution in regard to the uh, risk manager being the agent. <laughs> and the next item will be the uh, cemetery needs. Um, the city clerk has uh, requested two graves uh, additional. So if there's no objection, uh, I'd like to adopt a motion to approve the cemetery deeds with both Debbie and Harold Sneed and Joyce and Donnie Adams. Since there's no objections, uh, the motion is approved the cemetery deeds for Debbie, Harold Sneed, and Joyce and Donnie Adams. It is adopted. Thank you. And we got staff anniversaries, five year anniversaries. I uh, got Justin Miles of Public Works, five years. Nick Marksberry of Electric Department, five years. And <coughs> Chuck Canopy, which Public Works is 10 years. Check that out. Uh, Take that around. <laughs> 10 plus. Yeah. How many you got to work? Enough. 27, 28. Yeah, so he's in for the long haul. Number. Uh, Does the council have anything to add? I would like to make a comment. I would like to meet the city attorney when you have time to discuss 2013-19 when it's all Yes, sir. You just call me and let me know I can free you anytime. We'll set it up before we leave tonight if that's okay with you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, the Human Rights Commission met Tuesday, and um, in presence was the mayor and Larry Green, and um, they have brought up the um, ordinance that needs to be updated, and after some research and things of that nature, I think that the mayor, you're going to work on that and bring that before us. Larry Green and I are looking at it uh, and working on it. We have to go through it line by line and make sure everything's in order. Is that something that's updated? Well, it hasn't been updated since 1986. There, there needs to be some new voters put in there. Is this for the joint ordinance? Yes. This is well, okay. Yes, yes. It yes. is that one. Yes. Okay. Objection, I will adopt the motion to adjourn. Since there's, since there's no objection, the motion is adopted and we, we are adjourned. Can't stand by two. Oh, great. Thank you a lot.